Sunday was all about St. Valentine, but today it's the pancakes that are looking fine. It's Talk of the Town, episode 29. When we lose a player like Matthews, obviously the left-footed delivery that, that he brings, it's good that we can straight away come in to replace that. Welcome back to the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you didn't catch me out, maybe a little bit. Where's the countdown, lads? Come on! Um, sorry about that. Uh, welcome back to the People's Pension Stadium. We are joined now by uh, CEO Erdem Konya. Uh, I'm told we're having a few uh, a few Wi-Fi issues, um, but uh, we, we, we've changed that. We've mixed it up a little bit. Hopefully, it'll be, uh, it'll be better. Smooth running from here. Out of the fire, into the frying pan. Um, pancake pun, we're, we're yeah. trying to deliver, even if they don't make sense, we're delivering them. Uh, Adam, obviously uh, the game was the way to Carlisle, um, good of Carlisle to call it off on the Friday, wasn't it, rather than uh, making us travel? Well, yeah, it's the same with the Bradford, we went halfway, thank God this time we haven't even left the ground, so uh, I think it's a good rest for the boys, and we've got a lot of fixtures coming now, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, we've got a very tough fixture schedule, so I think that was a blessing in disguise, really. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at it earlier on about how many, sort of from the start of January, we, we've missed quite a few weeks in comparison to uh, to other teams, which I suppose does have a benefit because in theory, like Stevenage, I think have played twice between our last game and tonight. They yeah. played two games in, in that time, where obviously we haven't. So you like to think we'll be rested, but I suppose that's going to have a knock-on effect as the season goes on, isn't it? Yeah, I think there's a balance to it. Look, I mean, we played Bournemouth very well that night and I felt we'd give a good account of ourselves. But I think we were tired and leggy for the Cambridge game because Cambridge didn't play Salford on that night. And it was a tough pitch in yeah. particular. Like, like, and it's, leggy. A, it's a very indifferent season and too many uh, schedules are breaking. We had a COVID outbreak at the most mutated form of the virus. All these things have happened to us. So hopefully we'll get back through it and we'll, we'll bounce back. I believe so. The break that we have had, how important is it when you're playing fixtures you know saturday tuesday saturday tuesday we've actually been able to have some time and the, the lads can regroup on the training ground not just have match recovery match recovery you can actually sit down and, and do some of the stuff you want to want you want to want to do sorry i can't speak for the lab but from what i've gauged from the lads the lads always want to play so that break we had like we've beaten leeds three nil we've got this momentum and suddenly we're not playing for weeks. I think that killed our momentum a little bit. You know what I mean? And that mm -hmm. getting back from that, the COVID effects, the togetherness of the group, you can't train, everyone's self-isolating, they're doing Zoom fitness sessions or whatever it is. So we, I think we lost, we lost it there. Not, we lost the momentum there, but we can't make excuses because we know how good we are. Yeah, That's yeah. the truth. And, and I, I suppose um, since, since that, since the Bournemouth game, we have had three games w without without a win. Yeah. But uh, football, football, and football fans get very much sucked into the moment, don't they? Mm. Like, and and uh, but I suppose even if you look at Newport at the moment, they were flying. They're on a, they're on a tricky run, but still in the playoffs. We're still not too far away. On the whole, we're still having a decent season. But I suppose it's important to get back to winning ways as quickly as we can. Yeah, look, I agree with you. But Cambridge, I think they are a top side, and on that they, I think they played very well. And credit to them. Once again, I think we were tired from Bournemouth. I think Leighton Orient were a bit unlucky. We missed the penalty. We missed three, four chances at the end. We should have won, really. Harrogate was the only one where I could look at it and go, you know what, we weren't good enough on the day. Yeah. The other two, I felt we did okay. Well, I mean, I noticed the stat um, earlier on when I, when I was pre prepping for tonight that Harrogate have like, the second most amount of points away from home or something. I was surprised by that. This yeah. season, I mean, they've, they've yeah. won 23 points away from home or something like that. So we're not, we're not the first to, to get beaten by them on, on our home no, turf. No, no, look, at the end of the day, it's a new side and it's a team that's been playing together since last season. Uh, I do believe that, I mean, I believe we are better than them. Mm -hmm. I definitely believe that and I think we should have beaten them. But that's life. You know, we have to learn from that, suck it up and carry on. We can't win. <coughs> we lost to Grimsby here. 
Yeah. And then we didn't get, you know, unbeaten in 10 games. We're beating Bolton away, Forest Green away. I think these results show you what the league's about. Yeah, it's up yeah. and down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. for sure. Yeah. There's a couple kind of interesting, exciting changes, I think, tonight to the starting line. I think one in particular is Tyler Frost coming in to start, who, since his son hasn't had a, a full run of games yet, but what can he come in tonight and, and add to the team? I think Tyler's already got two goals and a few assists. Yeah, so he's yeah. got... He's bags of energy off the bench, I yeah. always find. And, like, he... I think he's someone that can really kick on and maybe, like... You know, we've been looking at it and, you know, Max Waters in 22 games became a star or 19 games. So it'd be interesting in the next 22 games we've got, who's going to shine? Because there's a few new people in there that can really shine. And, and I think, um, and, and I'm putting, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm predicting, I'm predicting here. <laughs> um, like, we, I've seen quite a few players, particularly wingers, um, and I'm going to read Gregor Cox as an example. We'll talk about him yeah. very shortly. But in their second season... They, they take off. Like you can see a little bit in their first season and then when the second season comes around, you, you go, wow, like different player. And Reese was definitely like that until until his injury. Yeah. And I wonder whether Ty Tyler's been, been good. He's been solid. There's definitely something there. And I wonder whether, given time, like going into a second pre-season, whether he'll fly. It's true. It's a valid point. That's why they're all on long-term contracts. You know that. <laughs> uh, and at the back as well, see Jordan Tunnicliffe, I felt was a, was a little bit of a, a miss, of course. He's been such a, such a unit for us at the heart of the back four and key that that he comes back in tonight. Yeah, I mean, look, it's like, I mean, just to use a comparison, Van Dyke at Liverpool, exactly. the wheels come off. So He'll like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up with that. There you go. Don't tell him he lost for a pay rise. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in all honesty, you know, it's, it, when you've got a familiar two centre-arts that have played together and done so well together, when you take one out, that's, it can happen. It's, it's This is normal. This is football, unfortunately. But we, I think we've got to react and we're, we're a very good side. We're a good set of lads, top management. We can do really well and it's been a great season. And we've just got to get back on track. But people should remember that we've gone through COVID. We've gone through a pandemic. We've done very well in the cup. You know, we've done a very good result in the history of the club. And we're still building. There's still a bit of hope. So let's not be negative and, uh, and yeah, positive. Yeah, there's more than a bit of hope anyway. I, th yeah, I th yeah, yeah. think we're always going to be in the position now. And I know it's, it's, some people will say it's nice to have the points on the board. But when we get to the back end of the season, we're going to have games in hand. I yeah, think. absolutely. And I, I can remember like John coming on the show and yourself at the start. Uh, in the early days when we were bef pre before you were you were, too, you were too big to come on the show then Harry and uh, but anyway um, John used to talk a lot about just surviving and, yeah. and just how surviving on the pitch surviving off the pitch we've done more than that like we're, we're off the pitch we've we we flourished with the sale of, of Max Waters, the FA Cup run, and, and the, the sort of the financial side of things. That's great. On the pitch, we've done a lot more than survive. Uh, we're, we're looking good in the league. We're we're still flirting with the playoff push. Yeah. When when you think about, and that's what I'm saying about people getting stuck in the moment. But actually, if you go back and watch the first few episodes of Talk of the Town, we're talking about survival. Now we're we're not talking <laughs> about survival. We're talking about moving on. moving up the league. But that shows progress. And I think what's important that we have to remember is that this is the highest league we've stayed consecutively in the history for more than one year. So now, thank God, we're establishing, we're an established EFL side, hopefully. And that's big for Crawley Town. And hopefully we can progress, build on it, and next season, just every, if every season we improved steadily, so then we're going to go the right way. But the business that we do is very important now, which is becoming a self-sustainable club. These are the challenges that we face that most fans wouldn't know about, obviously, naturally, because it's all our troubles yeah, yeah, inside. Yeah. But thank God that's working as well, which will give us the platform to move more freely, move more confidently, be a bit more, take a few more risks. Yeah. And hopefully that, that that's what you know these uh, transactions will give us. We we spoke uh, very briefly there about Reese Gregor Cox. What's the update on him? Is he close to a return? <sighs> well, Not well, sure. If he plays this season, we'll be lucky. Right. But he is a player that I think he's got phenomenal ability, and he's good to see him back with good attitude, strong boy, determined, and hopefully we see him soon. I, I'd love to see. He'll him be a soon. new signing, won't he? That, that's Mate, he's that's top the, the feel it will be. Top player. How unlucky was he? You know. Uh, player, well, yeah, he was right at the peak. I, mean, when, uh, I really, he was really I, lucky, yeah. I think he's. I really like him, mate. I think he'll be an Irish international as well eventually. I really do believe that. Hopefully he gets over this injury, but he's such a strong boy and he's determined, good attitude as well. So he's a he's a delight to have, I think. All of the boys are mm -hmm. good, to be fair. Uh, and um, So that, that, that's reminded me, t talking about Irish internationals, James Collins. Oh, yeah. But I saw you talking in the week about um, how we've got, and I know you spoke to me before, about how we've got assets in the yeah. in the football league. James Collins being one. We, Panooch seems to be doing really yeah, well yeah. down in Plymouth. I'm proud of him. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Frying yeah. pan. Uh, there you Brian, go. Brian, Brian, Jacob Martin. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, well done, there you go. Um, 
Yeah, but I suppose I suppose we're hoping that, that these players go on and, and do well because that obviously will mean we're doing well financially. Well, look, it, it gives us another look. When you come in, you've got zero percent sell on, right? So after five years, you've got let's say 150 percent sell on, and you've got assets within your club. So therefore, you've got assets outside that can also bring you money. So you're spreading your risk on increasing your stocks outside. Is it a guarantee? No. But it's a chance and it's a better hand than the hand that we had. Yeah, yeah. But hopefully, like with Colo, you say that, but his contract's running down. It's a model, um, I'm sad enough, I, I listened to uh, Darren McCantony's podcast yeah. and he talks a lot about it, about how, firstly, he does it to lower league clubs and non-league clubs. He'll, he'll yeah. buy a player off of them and give them a, a big sell-on so they do well out of it. But also when he said, I'm assuming he probably got a big sell-on with Ivan Tony. Yeah, and that, that's the model they've had for a long time. Yeah, and it uh, works. We actually benefited from it I from Quion Edwards. The other yeah, thing, as a, from a fan's point of view, I think, part of supporting Crawley is that you get a player come to the club you want them to do well and then once they do make that step like I feel like I'm, I've got a commitment to, to their career as well in a, yeah. in a little you, way you often yeah. see people comment about Carlin and um, Carlin 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 when yeah. Pat Pan made his Premier League debut yeah, that was a similar yeah. kind of thing I think the successful tr models at the moment you can see are Brentford Peterborough Accrington and Exeter these are the football yeah. models in the EFL that are working and we got to try and be like that and try and we are we're trying like if you looked in the last two years I'd say we're in the top seven in League Two in transactions, and I'd say we're in probably in the top 12 in League One with what we've done. So that's good. And it, we just got to keep on building. We're nowhere near where we want to be because we want to be like Exeter. You know, yeah, six, yeah. you know, you've probably got six million in the bank. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. So you can hold on to players and get max price. Not like us, where it's a bit, you know, in the moment, you're still not struggling, but you're, you're still fighting. Yeah. Yeah, Does yeah. it put you in a nice position in going into this summer with any other potential clubs that might be you know, having a, having a look at the players we've got in this group, knowing that you can fall back on, on the money that we've sold from Max in, in the window in, in January? I think it's set the bar higher for ourselves. So in <laughs> a way, it's, it's gives, it gives us a test. And I'm, I'm hungrier now to go again. Like I want to I wanna go into the market in summer and Ball really give everything. Gone. If you're hungry, <laughs> Paul has got an offer on. If you're hungry, five pound burger, chips, and a drink. Match day offer, five pound. Sorry, there you go. Just get that one in. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, any, 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 any chance, any chance, any chance. Quickly, move on. <laughs> no, honestly, though, hopefully we do the business yeah. in the summer. It is important we do. What are you doing to <laughs> me, mate? <laughs> no, I was just thinking to myself. I'm talking about the importance <laughs> of this club and you're about burger and chips. Well, come on. Well, where's his mind at? <laughs> Can't keep your marketing man down. Oh, I was just thinking to myself as well. Like, I was thinking, when we... When we were in the early days up in the pod, like the, the conversation was a little yeah. bit like me trying to, yeah, trying to move very It flows slowly. now. We sound rageous. Like they're sitting going, come on, chop, chop, move on. <laughs> Adam, thank you very much no, for thank joining you, us. Adam, thank Thanks you. for the insight. We are going to move on. Uh, we spoke a little bit there about Tyler Frost. He took part in a new challenge here, sponsored by Complete Turf Care, along with Stuart Nelson, who's over my shoulder. He's pitching in with Complete Turf Care. Yeah, we are again. There's a lawnmower. And there's a man who we call... Ben, meet Ben. Say hello, ben. hello ben. From Complete Turf Care. He came up with the idea of pitching on the pitch with a golf club. That's right, this superhero that keeps our grass nice and neat for the game come up with chipping in with Complete Turf Care. Check him out. Hello Reds fans, welcome to Pitching In, brought to you by our friends at Complete Turf Care. We know we've got uh, a lot of keen golfers within the squad and we really want to test their golfing skills using our very high budget chipping net. How it works, each of the lads are going to have five shots, they'll be chipping in from three different distances. We're going to put the net at the six yard box, the penalty spot and finally the halfway line. It'll be pretty miraculous if anyone gets in from there, but it's all good fun. There'll be three possible scores. We've got 10 points for the outer rim, uh, 25 and 50 points for that inner red circle. When we move to the halfway line, if any of the lads can get it in from there, scores will be multiplied by 10. Let's play golf.
when here we are again, there's a lawnmower and there's a man who we call Ben. Meet Ben. Say hello, Ben. Hello, Ben. From Complete Turf Care. He came up with the idea of pitching on the pitch with a golf club. That's right. This superhero that keeps our grass nice and neat for the game come up with chipping in with complete turf care check them out yeah congratulations to Stuart Nelson there getting a win over Tyler Frost that series will continue for for a few weeks now I believe with a few different players taking part in that and we'll see who is the pitching in with complete turf care champion in a few weeks Someone we always like to champion and always champions the Reds on the, the I follow on the radio is Gary. Gary, you haven't joined us for a few weeks. Welcome no, back. It's been a few weeks. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for having me back. And <laughs> Harry, of course. Thank you. <laughs> on, on, our, on our budget school oh, stage. Oh, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. High budget. <laughs> yeah, I love high, it. High budget. Oh, I love it. Uh, Gary, obviously, um, we, we've spoken a little bit about how we've had a bit of a dip in form. We've not won in mm. three. Uh, but we have had a little bit of a break. Steven and Jim that time have played, have played twice. How do you see that impacting the game today? I think it's going to be tough. I mean, I think that you, you can't take anything for granted. You know, you look at Stevenage's position in the league, uh, the same as you probably would have looked at Harrogate's and thought, well, with the home form that Crawley have had recently, it's probably going to be a little bit of a home banker. But, you know, we've all been around the, the game for far too long to know that there's anything like a home banker. You know, they've been picking up some good results on the road themselves. They had a win at Tranmere, didn't they, a couple of games ago. I know they lost up at Bolton, but from what I can understand and, and what I saw, they were, they were very much in the game. They've made some signings in January that have strengthened their side. Uh, and I think when you when you look at a uh, statistically, Joe, over the last five games, each side has got exactly the same record. I think it's two wins, one draw, and two defeats in the last five. So Crawley really need to get back to, to winning ways because I think when you look at tonight and you look at Saturday and you look at next Tuesday, if it's on away at Grimsby, it's all games against teams that are currently below Crawley in the league. So they've got to be looking to pick up points if they're going to look to surge back up the table. Yeah. And the, I always find Stevenage whenever we play them, our, our head-to-head record with them. I don't, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. It, it's got to be a little bit iffy. Just, I feel like we always go into a Stevenage game thinking, "Yep, three points. Here we go, tick." Yeah, yep. I, I remember we, we went there. We, we went there in John Yems' first game last year, didn't yeah, we? And yeah. it was a, it was a bit of a ball draw, nil nil. Yeah. Um, I mean, looking looking at Stephen, we, we're going to have Alex from Stephen join us very shortly. So I don't want to talk too much about them, but um, looking at them, it seems that they're that sort of side. They don't score many goals. They don't concede many goals either. No, they don't really. They've got a relatively good defensive record. Um, you know, their, their goal scoring record is, is is quite good as well. Uh, they've got Luke Norris up top tonight, who always seems to score against Crawley. Remember him coming here for Colchester, got that equaliser, didn't he, for for them in that Carabao Cup game, you know, a couple of seasons ago. Uh, and they've also got Matty Stevens in the side tonight who's on loan to them from Forest Green Rovers. Well, you're not going to be at Forest Green if you're not a decent player. Yeah. Uh, so I think the boss, Alex Ravel, you know, they've, they've managed to knock themselves a couple of places up the table now away from the relegation places. And I think he'll just be looking to, you know, stabilise things as well now. So I think tonight is going to be tough. Uh, but I think the changes that, that John has made to the Crawley side tonight uh, are interesting ones as well. Yeah. And you, so you see bags and bags of, of Crawley matches. What did you make of those two home games, the Orient and Harrogate games? Because I, I said to Joe at the start of the show that I maybe felt it didn't suit us playing against 10 men really in, in either of the games. So hopefully it'd be a more expansive kind of 11 versus 11. I think that suits us better. Yeah, I think it's hard, isn't it? Sometimes people think it's easy against 10 men. Uh, I mean, Orient, you know, to their credit, they, they, if anything, they possibly deserved to win it, didn't they? They had yeah. the more shots on target. And I think... When I spoke to John after the Orient game, his, his overriding feeling was one of annoyance as opposed to frustration. I said to him, it must have been frustrating. And he said, annoying more than anything, Gary. We played for an hour against 10 men, didn't create anything. Uh, I think the Harrogate won. I think maybe the game was gone when the sending off happened. You know, they probably got one back to make it 3-1, but didn't really look like they were going to get anything else from the game. I think credit to both Orient and Harrogate. They set themselves up, Orient particularly, when they played for an hour with 10 men. You know, got their banks of four behind it. Uh, behind the ball, tried to catch Crawley on the break uh, and very nearly did. And, and Glenn being named, I think, man of the match in that game sort of tells you all that you need to know, really, about the fact that Crawley played for an hour against 10 men and, and the goalkeeper for Crawley was, was the man of the match. And as I say, Harrogate, the game was, you know, I spoke to Tony Craig after the game. Game was gone, wasn't it, by, by half time, really. And, you know, there was, there was no real surprise in that when you looked at Harrogate's record before the game and maybe a little bit of underestimation on, on Crawley's part. Yeah, maybe. Um, so f- finally, Gary, before we let you go, um, what, what are you predicting this evening? What are you score-wise, what are you predicting? What are people saying online? 
People are saying that Crawley will win this one tonight. And as I say, it's the first of three very important games with coaches to come in here Saturday, a trip to Groomsby next week. But, you know, please God that it's on before Exeter come here, which is going to yeah, be... Yeah, really looking forward to yeah. it. A very... Groomsby <laughs> away. A very, away. Yeah. Yeah. And now you've got... And, <laughs> and now Carlisle on a Bradford. Tuesday night yeah, <laughs> as well. Yeah, Carlisle, come on. We just love it. It's, it's so all much. happening. It's all happening. Uh... I think that, that Crawley will do the business tonight. I think we seem to say every week the first goal is going to be very important. Crawley need to keep themselves in the game, make sure that they get the first goal because I think Stevenage have, have maybe got enough in them that if they get the first, they can get men behind the ball uh, and defend a lead relatively well. Uh, I think it's good to see Jordan Tunnicliffe back in the side tonight. I think that's a big plus coming back into the side. I think Dallison is also a big plus coming back into the side. Jordan Maguire drew possibly with a little bit of a point to prove. Um... I don't think any sort of surprise that Nadison's dropped down to the bench. And if you're going to pin me for a result, Joe, which I know you are, <laughs> uh, I'm going to say, uh, despite your man from Stephen is standing just over there and coming on in a moment, I'm going to say it's going to be 2-1 to Crawley. 2-1 to Crawley. Gary, thank you very much for joining welcome, us. Of course, yes. you can join Gary on the I follow. Season ticket holders should have access to that game for free. But if you're not a season ticket holder, just £10. Create an account if you haven't done so already. Pay your £10 and you can get tonight's action. I'm telling you, it's going to be a good night. Don't 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 sit at home and not watch the game because we're on a bit of bad form. Get your £10 out, watch the game, and hopefully it'll be a good one. Gary, thank you very much. Enjoy your commentary. Welcome. We'll, uh, Cheers, we'll catch up with you later. Cheers, guys. We spoke there about a few away games we've got coming up, and the people getting us there will be the Ryan Cantor Club. They are fantastic, but don't take my word for it. Speak to their other customers. Hi, I'm Debbie Hay. I'm Chair of the Trustees of the Dame Vera Lynn Children's Charity. We're based at Cookfield in West Sussex, which is not a million miles away from the Ryan Cantor Club. Hence why Keith and the club have helped us over the past year or so. The Ryan Cantor Club supports us by providing us with a vehicle, which is fantastic because it means our outreach worker can go out and actually visit families in their houses. Lingfield needs two chase vehicles all the time, obviously for all the races. Um, it being the busiest race course in Europe, that's a lot of races. And our then car supplier um, was restructuring the business, should we say. So, <laughs> yeah, so we had a bit of an immediate problem and I was introduced to you via email, I think, and then I popped up at your office one day and uh, yeah. sat over a coffee, if I remember rightly. Yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to invite you here to get your new car because eight years ago, we did a video of you collecting a new car from us. You did? At Brighton Racecourse. So we thought, why not collect your new car at Lingfield Racecourse? Yeah, Brilliant. So it, it's great. It's been great. I mean, we don't see each other very often, but we have dealt with each other, probably Mark and I, for what, 10, 10 yes, years? at least 10, probably more. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. What we're trying to show to all of our customers and potential customers is that we are nice people to deal with. We value our customers for years. We go with them through the good times and bad times, but we never leave each other. Really. Well, what we're trying to do through through the Canter Club is offer people that simple solution. And what we've found, I mean, we've been doing it, what, three years now? If we have a customer that's broken down or they've had an accident or they've got a flat tire, they ring you and it's dealt with. And the other thing is, obviously, you run a lot of vehicles and the Cantor Club's been able to help you with your vehicle supply, so we actually work together and dovetail, don't we? You've always got a solution for it. Yeah, no, we have. That's why we get on so well, Andy. It is. Yes, welcome back to the People's Pension Stadium. It's that time of the day and that time of the show where I have to start looking over my shoulders because the balls are flying in once again. We brought in Alex, who's CEO of Stevenage, just at the right time. Yeah, <laughs> cheers, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> we warn you now that if you get hit around the back of the ball, please, please don't make a claim. Um, uh, Alex, Stevenage, sort of last year, fortunate really to, to stay up from obviously the few things with Berry and, and Macclesfield that, that enabled you to stay up. But this year, you seem to have got yourselves together a little bit more and, and making progress. Yeah, look, last year was a really difficult season for us for a whole variety of reasons, really. really and, who knows what would have happened. We had 10 games to play when COVID broke out. We had to play eight of the bottom 10 and six of the teams of others. Look, maybe we could have done it, maybe we wouldn't have. But that said, um, look, we, we, we survived. Uh, it's a very unique story. <laughs> um, we had three weeks to prepare for life in, in League Two again. Uh, and I think that's probably shown the, the first half of our season. We've had a lot of players we brought in thinking we'd be in the National League. Um, and we, you know, some of those players have, have managed to cement themselves a place in the side. Some of them have, have moved on now. Uh, we've done a lot of strengthening in the transfer window and, and our form in recent weeks really since the start of the year has been one that would probably be of a mid-table side that's maybe even pushing for a playoff spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
one thing I noticed that I just said earlier on to Gary, that you, you've actually conceded less goals than Crawley. So despite us being sort of quite a number of points ahead and higher in the league, in terms of goals conceded, you, you don't concede that many goals. You just seem to struggle to score them. No, we, we had two bad trips on the road, one at Carlisle and one at Exeter, where we shipped a few goals. I think it was seven in the two. But if you take that away, we've been uh, we've been fairly resilient at the back. It's been it's been the other end that's been the more difficult part. And you know, we, if we lose, we lose by the odd goal. But um, that's certainly starting to change in recent weeks. Just how hard has it been to, to run a club in in the last last twelve months? I, I, fans can see it from the outside and go, you know, lots of businesses are struggling. But when football is operating, but in, under the current climate, how hard has that been? Yeah, it's, it's probably the one of the only industries where you can operate legally, but you can't make any money. Yeah, yeah. You, it's almost hundred percent cost. So. So, so that challenge, um, I think the backdrop we've had as well, where we've we've gone through the the term of potentially being relegated and not, and other things. Um, but look, we've we've just had to embrace the challenges, and we've done lots of work in the community, and we've, we've done all kinds of other things at the club that have probably just kept us going from a mental perspective. But look, we feel we're in a good place. We only had two two real ambitions for this year: one, stay alive as a club financially, yeah. which is probably the same for yeah, the other twenty four, yeah. uh, and to stay in the football league. Yeah. And look, hopefully that will get accomplished between now and the end of the season. Look, tonight's going to be a difficult game for us. We know that, um, but you know we'll see. But yeah, you know, no, I, I suppose um, I mean, Erdem, Erdem talked a lot about trying to make Crawley a sustainable club, and and we, we've tried to do that by player sales this year, and, and hopefully we'll be successful. I suppose in a way, Stevenage were rewarded for trying to be that sort of model, trying to be as self-sustainable as they can be, whereas clubs like. Macclesfield and Berry, who have who have historically overspent, they're the ones who are punished. But because you run a, a tight ship at Stevenage, it's, it's proved fruitful for you. Heads. Hey, good dog. Good shout. Hey, ninja. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, we've 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 got quite a sustainable model at Stevenage. How we run things, we've got lots of revenue streams on off off the field, so we're not just relying on that. But uh, look, no one would have predicted what's happened in the last twelve months from a COVID perspective, and. Look, we're just really grateful to still be playing and we want to, like yourselves, get the fans back in as soon as possible and uh, return football to what it is, really. And, like, also, you come here, we're not, we haven't been in the greatest form, but, but before that, we've been having a good season. We've scored a lot of goals. From a Stevenage point of view, are you coming here this evening thinking, do you know what, a point would be good? Or are you coming going, we're coming here thinking, actually, it's a wounded animal, we can try and take all three? Uh, I, I think when you get on the coach and you go to any away ground, you go, would you take a point? Yes, you would. But that said, we need to probably get to 50 points more work to do so we go into every game knowing we need to get to 50 points and if we can get through tonight fantastic um you know i expect we'll probably come here tonight and uh, and approach it like we did last three four games and 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 do our best to try and get all three points but look, league two is a funny league you know that as well as <laughs> yeah. I do. anyone can beat anyone and, and that's probably what makes it so unique i know, I know you said about the, the, the little bit of a struggle to score goals but the Crawley fans watching this where should they be looking out for from a stevenish point of view that you know a key man or something that, that might worry us? Um, so one of interest, so we've, got, we've got Jack Rolls, Tottenham player, who's joined us joined us in the window. Um, he had two or three minutes at Bolton on Saturday, so it's his first real time in the side. Um, we've got Stevens and Norris up front who have come in in the window as well. Um, uh, we, we, we were saying Luke, Luke, Luke Norris always scores yeah, against us. Like, he's got history. He's a good, he's a good player, Luke Norris. And yeah, he, I, big signing. It's just it's just an all round, you know, hard working team really. You know, they they're playing for the shirt this season and you know, uh, we'll see. Let's see what Jack does in midfield. I think that'll be an interesting one to see tonight. Fantastic. Alex, thank you very much for giving us time. We'll, we'll, we'll get you out of the firing line. Uh, Cheers, John. <laughs> we spoke there a little bit about uh, revenue streams from off the field being very important. One revenue stream that Crawley have created during this pandemic is ballers. Uh, you can support ballers by uh, staying at home, just eat or Uber Eats. Or if you can get down to the stadium this evening at some point or any time, you can order online uh, for collection. But let's take a look at advert for our revenue stream, ballers.
Yes, I don't just promote ballers. I, I got myself involved in a in a match day deal earlier on. Burger, chips, and a drink. Don't tell the wife. <laughs> I'm, I'm supposed to be healthy eating. I was like, don't worry, I'll eat. She'll see it out of the joint account. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, love. <laughs> um, let's run through that team again in goal today. Glenn Morris, uh, George Frankham, and Tom Dallison at fullback. Uh, Jordan Tunnicliffe comes back into the side to partner Tony Craig. Uh, then in the midfield three, which is quite a familiar midfield mm. three of uh, uh, Josh Wright, Jack Powell, and Jake Hessenthaler. And then sort of uh, attacking, we think maybe it may be sort of giving us some whip today. Tyler Frost, Jordan Maguire Drew, and Tom Nichols. Harry, we obviously we some people seem to think we have, we have struggled over the past few weeks. Slight change today. Do you expect it to be a positive one? I think it. I think it. I think it has to be in, in in a sense that I think maybe throughout the course of the season, this is when things were going really well as well. I don't think anyone really necessarily knows our best eleven. We've got plenty of depth in the in the squad this season. That that really stands out for me, which is great when results aren't going your way because you can you can tweak things to, to to where you think the problems may may lie. I always think. When when Addison's on the bench, I think you know that I feel from a little bit because um, I know he's got such a good eye for goal. Yeah. Um, but equally, you can get Nichols in the box, who's who's great in the air. Clever. And, and like we touched on earlier, Frost and Maguire Drew. I think we'll just be looking to to whip the balls in and, and, and get Nichols a goal. Yeah. And and uh, like one thing we haven't really spoken about this evening. I think John Yem starts his his two match ban this evening. Do you think that's going to make an impact? <laughs> I think we've been in enough behind closed doors games. To know that, that shouts can come <laughs> from anywhere, can be heard. they can't be heard <laughs> yeah. from anywhere. Like, like um, Jordy Nick getting told off at Bournemouth for a, <laughs> an inexplicit shout. <laughs> at the no, I, <laughs> if Jordy Nick can be heard, then then John Yem's definitely making himself heard. It's not like we're away at Bolton and John's been you know, put up in the gods and stuff like that. It would be really easy to get a message. I know that uh, Lewis Young and Danny Bullman will be probably running up between him and Lee, um, getting messages across. So, so no, I, I don't think the he'll be a, like a, a loss to the team. I think the impact will still be the same. And he's still allowed in the changing rooms as well, so he can still still get the message across in there. Right, coming up, uh, we'll be giving you, just before I kick, I must be about 10 minutes or so away, we'll be bringing you the, the best of the pancake puns that we've had throughout the day uh, after this very short break. 2017, £30 million has been lost to pension scammers. That's about 26,000 Premier League season tickets. During these uncertain times, it's more important than ever to defend your hard-earned money. Be on the ball to anyone contacting you out of the blue. Find out more about pension scams and how to avoid them by visiting our website. Right, what better way to, to go out on the show this evening than bringing you, bringing you the best of the pancake puns here. Uh, Luke Moore, I, I said it, Luke Moore is the one who needs all the credit. Congratulations, Luke. Nick Sirupla, well you, played. You, Joe hasn't that stopped talking about so this for a good couple of hours now. Nick Sirupla, fantastic. <laughs> well done, Luke. Uh, that's what we know. we got Sam Newton, Pancake, Kamara, Nick Smith, Jake Hessentosser, uh, Paul Searle, Josh Chockerty. Yeah, nice. Like that, like that. Uh, Andy Salmon. Glent Morris. Yeah, Glent clear, Morris. simple. You love like it, that, love you? it. You love it, <laughs> Glent Morris. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back here on our high-budget stage on Saturday when the Reds take on Colchester. For now, you've got a couple of minutes. Make yourself a cup of tea. Pour yourself a beer if you're that way inclined. Uh, uh, get yourselves over onto iPhone. Get follow. yourself a pancake. Get, yes, you Enjoy might have a bit of time. time. If you've got a little bit of leftover mix, go on. Well, pancake. <laughs> <laughs> get, get in your, your frying panuche pan come on around. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> this has gone down here. Yeah. Um, yeah, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly because the game kicks off in just 10 minutes. Time. Thank you very much for joining us. Harry, thank you very Cheers. much again. Thank you very much to the filming company who once again have been slightly above average in putting on <laughs> the show. Sorry for the Wi-Fi Issues that we've had. We had some sound issues. Always issues. What's going on here, boys? Come on. So no, no more issues. We're supposed to be here at four. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Enjoy the game. All that's left for us to say is, come, come on, on, you Reds. Reds.
If you enjoyed it as much as we did, you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that bell icon so you can be notified about when we are next live here from Talk of the Town. Make sure you don't ever miss an episode, subscribe, hit the bell, and we will see you again very soon.